and check out this view right here. Check this out. I mean, you can see everything here. The, the, the ocean is straight that way. Hopefully you can see, you probably can't because it's kind of hazy in the air, right? But look at this, look how amazing this looks all around us. And the best part is we have the CAR right next to us. So uh, basically it's been at the shop for the past week or so getting all the PPF installed. But finally, I am so happy to say it is completely protected and just ready to go. And what do I mean by saying it is protected? Well, basically the entire front end has PPF installed. Not just that, we have ceramic coating over the entire car and also more film on all the high impact areas for the vehicle. So if you haven't seen the previous video, make sure to check it out. All the work was installed by the amazing team at Elite Finish. And as you can see, it, it just, it looks so amazing. It's so shiny. And this yellow, I am definitely hooked on it, right? Just look at it. And it is metallic. You see any of those dots right now? I'll, uh, I'll zoom in for you. You see those flakes? They're kind of spread out. There's not too many of them. It's not like concentrate or anything like that but it looks so good, especially without the front badge up front. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? Do you like the C8 without the front badge, the Corvette logo, or with it? What's interesting is that in the comment section of our previous video where we asked you that same question, I think majority of you actually said you preferred the car without the badge. And zooming in, it does look pretty mean without it, doesn't it? Because um, it makes the front end just more, I'd say clean, but the same time I do like the badge there so so let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of the C8R without the front badge should we leave it like this so basically what is on the agenda well essentially um, the new C8 Z06 is finally being revealed in the next um I think week and a half or so right just a little under 10 days and then we get we get to see the new Z06 I am so excited about it. It's been so many years of us hyping up about it, talking about, you know, uh, spy shots out there of it being uh, shot in the middle of the backcountry. But now, now it's, it's finally coming out. And I have such awesome news to share with all of you. And I think many of you already know about this. But to start out this video, if you want to see the new Corvette Z06, I'm told you can actually just sign up at the Peterson Museum for a general admission pass for any of the dates between October 26th to the 29th and you'll see the Z06 on display which is so cool because um, the day it gets revealed you can actually see the car. So many of us are so excited to see it because we want to order it. Just like me, I want to order the car and get my own version. Nonetheless, I'm happy to say I will be there at the reveal for this new C8 Z06 so expect some awesome content uh, showcasing the new vehicle and I'm um, just tracking our red torch red CA Corvette and then getting this car right here the first ever special edition CA Corvette there there's a lot of things I do want to ask for and just hope for when it comes to uh, seeing what's on the new Z06 it's really funny I'm not sure if you've seen this but uh there's bees th that continue to try to land on top of this car and they're flying away I'm not sure I think a yellow attracts bees for a car that is so funny to see here's the deal there's five extremely important things that I want to see on this new Corvette Z06 and I, I wanted to make this video because um, I wanted to share them with you and also kind of create like a discussion post about this from all your perspectives and I want to ask all of you the same thing what do you want to see with it as well 5,000 feet up I guess if you're drag racing this is not where you want to be but uh, we're not doing that today anyways starting off with a uh, number one item on the list that is gonna be upgraded brakes but specifically not just any upgraded brakes because I want to break down thoroughly what I have learned from the mid-engine Corvette Stingray. As you can see right here in front of us we have four piston brakes on the CA Corvette which if you compare that against any other like mid-engine supercar out there none of them use four piston brakes and the reasoning behind that is pretty simple. Now six piston is kind of like the industry standard for high horsepower performance vehicles like Shelby Mustangs also um, the Camaro um, ZL1, 1LE, etc. all use six piston brakes. The reason they put on the four piston brakes on this car is because right away, since this vehicle only has 495 horsepower, it is not the quickest accelerating vehicle out there. Well, it may be out of the dig, 
right? But um, you're able to, to make a car stop very, very well with just four piston brakes and having the car just be lighter in general. So the four piston brakes do a phenomenal job again on the racetrack and so forth being used hard. But there's one big problem with them. Now, since there's less pistons pushing down on the rotor, you have less bite. But also, since there's not a larger rotor up front and out back, you have less surface area for the pads to um, be pushed on. Here's the deal. I know some of you are probably thinking like, well, bigger brakes would just increase rotating mass. And you, you don't want to do that. It's more weight that's spinning and that's inertia. And inertia is probably one of the most important things that you want to decrease on a car. But here's the deal. Even though that larger rotors will weigh more, even if they're probably even carbon ceramic, there's another positive just benefit to them. They also increase the cooling capacity for your brakes. Like the massive 16 and a half inch rotors on the Shelby GT500 track pack do such a good job with managing the heat produced by those six piston brakes and allows you to use the car at its limit for a longer just extended period of time so you won't get that brake fade um, so soon in your track session and having larger rotors you can put on bigger pads which that larger surface area of the pads will allow less of the pad to be used during each and every single stop therefore you would get so much better um, brake pad life I think I know this um, so much because I have gone through more pads than probably most people have um, just this I can't even count anymore going to Laguna Seca, Willow Springs, Chuckwalla, um, basically everywhere here in California, even going to like the Ron Fellows Driving School, I've seen how many pads these cars can go through. And if you're using this car at its limit, you will get roughly, I'd say, two track days to three at a track like Laguna Seca. And they're not cheap pads. They are like over $1,000 from the dealership. So that is why right away, brakes are my most important um, want. I want bigger brakes, more powerful brakes that will be much more up to the task of um, using them at the limit. And since we are on the subject of brakes, what goes next to the brakes that actually is probably the most important aspect of any vehicle on the planet? Well, that is gonna be the tires because the tires are the only thing connecting you and all the horsepower of that engine to the road. So the better tires you have, the better a car will perform, the faster it will corner, the faster it'll accelerate basically everything. Just imagine your shoes, right? Your shoes are the same thing that uh, tires are for a car. So if you've seen any of the spy shots online of the new uh, CA Corvette Z06, you know that the car actually has a wide body for the front and rear of the vehicle it looks like. You have the much larger um, side intakes for the enhanced cooling, similar to that of the C8R actual race car. It looks like from the spy shots we have seen that we're going to see 345 um, rear tires on the new CA Corvette Z06, which is going to be so crazy. I mean, that's on a Z06, not even the ZR1. So wider tires than what the ZR1 has for the less horsepower mid-engine Z06. Can you believe that? Bending down all the way, you can just see how mean this car looks with 305s, but just imagine having such just more wide tires in the rear. And it all makes sense, it really does. Putting 345s on the new Z06 means you have a much larger contact patch being put on the ground. The more rubber that is connected to the road, the more grip you will have. So your braking performance will be better. Your cornering lateral grip will be better. Your acceleration out of the dig for launch control will be better, which I'm excited to see the new zero to 60 times. In general, I think having the ultimate tires, the widest tires will give you the best performance stats and specs uh, possible for whatever engine horsepower output that you have. Yeah, it doesn't work for all cases. Like if you put on 345s on a Miata, um, that wouldn't mean you get a faster car but it is important for a vehicle like this that weighs over 3,000 pounds. Anyway, so here comes my main point for point number two. I really am crossing my fingers. I'm hoping that if this car does have 345s out back and like, you know, 
to I think 75 or 65 from what I saw up front from the you know spy shots that it's not going to be too expensive to run and maintain because from those spy shots we saw this car was running on Cup 2 R's and if you're familiar with um, Cup 2 R's on Porsches for example even for like Ferrari you can get those tires on like let's say the Pista also the new um, GT2 RS Porsche even the GT3 RS's you could get Cup 2 R's even the new Porsche uh, GT3, the new 992, can come with Cup 2Rs. And the reasoning behind that is pretty simple. They are the stickiest um, DOT street legal tires you can possibly buy that are not Hoosiers. So when it comes to going after a uh, Nürburgring a lap record that you see like Chevrolet doing, that they've been driving nonstop at the Nürburgring, Cup 2Rs are perfect for going after those lap records. Coming this way, there is a downside to having Cup 2 R's, which is what, what I'm getting at right now. They cost well over $3,000 for a set and um, close to fourth tax. I'm crossing my fingers that a Chevrolet manages to find a way to make them not super expensive or find a way to make sure that these tires will last a considerable, a good amount of time for that uh, money you're putting in, right? That investment. And I get it, they're tires, right? They're tires, they shouldn't last forever. But from my experience of driving the 48 Pista on Cup 2Rs, you really, uh, the ultimate grip that you have with them comes sooner when you just initially put them on. The, for after the first, I'd say, a couple of heat cycles, then the performance starts getting lower and lower and then it'll plateau at right around where the cut two is, the standard cut two. It's interesting how it works, but I just keep in mind the ultimate grip with any tire, especially for a cup two R, is when the tires are brand new. That's where you're gonna see your extra a second to two seconds is when the tires are fresh and ready to go. In general though, I am very happy that the new C8Z06 is looking like it's gonna have cup two R's because if you want to get to the ultimate levels of grip, that is how you do it. And we're back into the Corvette, turning it on. So, so here's the deal, we've talked about the tires, the brakes. Well, I want to talk about the horsepower and it's the overall engine of the new Z06. The car, it needs horsepower. It needs a good amount of horsepower because if you look at other vehicles out there, um, the standard for the horsepower mark with performance cars has just been increasing and increasing and increasing. We, we have the AN horsepower red eyes, right? We have the GT500 track pack with 760 horsepower for a track car um, just having low 600s I don't know if that's enough really so it, it all depends on how they are able to engineer this engine and there are limitations for having a completely naturally aspirated V8 if that's what it's going to have so when it comes to uh, building it and having it have more horsepower than the C7 Z06 which had 650 is going to be very challenging I think and if they could pull it off that's just going to show the whole world just how good the engineers are at, at Chevrolet. I'm crossing my fingers that we at least have 650 horsepower if not more because if we have anything less than that I don't know if that's going to be enough to truly compete with a lot of the vehicles coming out. The lowest horsepower mid-engine Ferrari you can buy right now is the FA that has 710 horsepower. Um, the new Artura has close to 700 horsepower. That's, that's the lowest um, entry model McLaren. Even Lamborghini with their V10s are producing right around the mid 600s. So as long as um, Chevrolet can, can find a way to make their horsepower output um, competitive, I think the car could be very fast on the racetrack and, and sell extremely well. This thing is so much fun in the corners and imagining such wider tires, stickier tires, more horsepower, completely naturally aspirated. What is that going to be like? You know what, let me pull over real quickly because I want to go over uh, most important thing number four that I want to see with the Corvette outside. And it's very important that I kind of visualize this because, um, well, it's going to be the aerodynamics and the downforce. So getting out of the car, you can hear the fans kicking on because then we're using this car as for what it's meant for, right? We have a Camaro flying by. Is he going to gun it? He's gunning it. <laughs> That's the first um, cool car I've seen out here all day. Anyways though, Porsche and even like Dodge for their Viper ACR, they give you so much aero for the racetrack. And I mean that 
with regards to, for example, the front end. Because with the Viper ACR, you have massive, massive dive planes up front. And then even with like the AMG GT Black Series, you have a larger front splitter that's tucked away under the front bumper that you can slide out to extend to give you more downforce and well, AKA more front end grip. Not just that, towards the rear of the vehicle, if you look at my uh, old 2020 GT500 track pack and even the Viper ACR, you can increase the angle of attack for the rear wing. I do know for the C7 Z06, you had the gurney flap design, but the, that little ducktail isn't going to be on the Z06 that we can tell so far. The Z07 package um, C8 Z06 that we have seen from all the shots of like the Nurburgring um, ha has had a massive rear wing, kind of like this, but taller. It reminds me a lot of like the, the new Kona seg is coming out, but it would be really cool if that rear wing was adjustable to increase the rear end downforce as needed for heavy downforce tracks and then lower it for tracks that are more um, focused on high speed straightaways. I personally want to see adjustability and I want to see an incredible amount of aero helping the car go faster around the racetrack. The Dodge Viper has all the cheat codes I think, right? Because if you look at the previous things I mentioned in this video, um, if you have more powerful larger brakes that, can, that are up to the task of um, not having any brake fade and then having super sticky, the stickiest tires possible and the widest tires possible, plus having a respectable amount of horsepower with an engine that doesn't overheat on the racetrack, throw in downforce, that's the formula right there. That's the cheat code to going extremely fast on the racetrack. And if they can nail that, then they have nailed, in my opinion, the most amazing track-focused uh, Corvette possible. Revving to 8,000 plus RPM with a flat plane crank V8 would be just unheard of for a Corvette. And having owned a, a GT350R Mustang, I loved that car. I loved the way the power band felt, how it was so linear, and I loved the noises that thing made. Now, there's one last thing I haven't covered yet, and it's something that Dodge Viper um, definitely has. Well, you need to make a car light. Becoming lightweight is one of the number one um, formulas that the McLaren uses for developing new cars. For my McLaren 600LT, they use a carbon fiber tub, which makes the car much lighter for the entire chassis, but also even more stiff. Dodge was focused on making the Viper for the ACR model as lightweight as possible. The entire front hood for the vehicle was carbon fiber. We need carbon fiber components on this new C8 Z06 to lighten it up. Because if you look at the C8R race car, the, the racing version of this car, literally the entire car, even towards the rear, is carbon fiber. The entire hatch above the engine bay is exposed carbon fiber on the inside. And that will save you so much weight. Imagine having this entire rear hatch in carbon fiber. It would cost a lot of money, I will say that probably, for the uh, developing it engineering it and having it as like an option or something like that. We may see it on like the Zora, but it's very important keeping the weight of a car down for the racetrack. The lighter the car, the longer it can go on a racetrack without going through consumables, the better it will feel on the racetrack and the faster it will be. Braking performance goes up, acceleration goes up, corner and grip grows up, all with having a lighter car. That's it, I think. Those are the five things that I want to see most with the new Corvette Z06. Please let me know in the comment section down below what do you think, what do you want to see with this new car? Anyways, that's going to wrap up my final um, anticipation a hype video. I guess you can say I'm so excited about it and I'm so happy to say it's finally being revealed in less than 10 days. Make sure to hit that like button or help me out. Also subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.